Good evening, I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, The Real Money Doctor, and it's currently um, Monday, April 13th. It's just a minute or two after 7 o'clock, if it's not 7 o'clock right now. And I wanted to touch base on today's uh, daily recap of events that affect you and your ability to get, protect, and enjoy your money, your life, and your retirement. And today I want to talk about new heroes. But before we get there, I want to touch base on the numbers. Every day we touch base on the numbers. The current cases of COVID right now in the United States are over 577,000. The number of deaths are over 23,000 in the last just three months. New York State has 195 cases, 195,000 cases right now, over 10,000 deaths. Of those 10,000, 7,300 of them are in New York City alone. New Jersey still has the number two spot, nothing to brag about, but it does, 64,000 cases almost 2,400 deaths so far. And when you hear a number like that, you know, 23,000 deaths, it's a really, really big story. And everybody is talking about, they've been talking about for a while now, well, we're gonna reach the peak. Okay, they wanna bend the curve, do all these things to reach the peak and bend the curve. Okay, you have to realize, you don't have to, but you really should. The peak is not a peak, it doesn't, we don't go up in these things and they just drop down immediately. It doesn't work that way. Okay, there's no magic when you reach the peak. The peak is actually a plateau. That means the number of cases and the number of deaths have reached their high level and not getting any higher. Doesn't mean they drop off. They're just not getting any higher. There's a plateau, it goes across like that. And that's what's happening right now. That's what people are hoping to achieve. Okay, now, these are facts, okay? And I can't change the facts, but the facts are influenced by our personal biases, how we interpret the facts, and if we even accept them at all. And some people just never really do. Now, right now the president's talking about, <laughs> the president's talking about reopening the economy. He's got a target date of May 1, and he's looking for a really, really big opening. And that's great to have this go up on the calendar. Oh, yeah, I'm going to grab this target date of May 1, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a big opening, um, big party, big whatever. Okay. It's not going to happen. He's named a commission or a task force of economic advisors to work on it, to try and make that happen. Now, whether you love the president or you hate him or you're somewhere in between, okay, there is more and more empirical data coming out every day that the federal government Okay, after an exceptionally slow response to this pandemic, has botched this on more than several occasions and by a number of different people in this administration. And, you know, you just look to any state governor, any hospital administrator, any ER, ICU doctor, nurse, and you're seeing it, okay, right there. They've noticed it for weeks now. Now, because the current projections are for 60,000 dead instead of 200,000, everybody thinks that's a good deal. That's still a lot of dead people. If you're one of them, you're not happy. If it's part of your family, you're not happy. Okay, with over 10% unemployment right now, yes, the economy is definitely hurting. A lot of people are hurting. Okay, and with 23,000 people, 23, people dead, 23,000 people dead, okay, a lot of individual people are hurting due to their losses too. Now the only reason that the numbers have come down so far and seem, only seem, to be hitting a plateau in some areas is that everything we've done up until now, the social distancing, the, the, the shelter in place, only the, non only the essential people going to work, all those things have affected all the numbers and have slowed the virus down. Now. There are rural, rural areas right now where the number of cases are actually low. And they're starting to pick up. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with rural areas. If you're from the city on either coast, you're probably not a lot familiar with it. If you're in the middle of the country, you understand already that you know, you've got one hospital in the county. It's poorly staffed. okay, And it could be an hour or more away. It's not like you're in a city and you get a choice of, of five hospitals in 15 minutes or not a real big deal. Okay. If you're in a rural area, they might have one hospital, one doctor, 
okay, in a hospital who might not even be there at night. He just might be on call. Okay, so that's, you know, in a quiet time, that's halfway okay. But it's lacking, and they haven't been able to deliver services for a while, and rural hospitals have been shutting down. Right now, as the number of cases pick up, the problems with the rural hospital system are really going to be exacerbated. Unbelievably. They're just not ready for this. And those weaknesses are going to show up very, very quickly in the coming weeks as the cases pick up. Now, the U.S. economy is not a light switch. You just can't turn it on from some office in Washington. It doesn't work that way. You'd like it to, but it doesn't work that way. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. Okay, just remember, several weeks ago, the president signed a multi-trillion dollar stimulus and recovery package. A multi-trillion dollar stimulus and recovery package a couple of weeks ago. Everyone was going to get checks from the IRS. They're going to get direct deposit. And if they had your bank information, no problem at all. If you get Social Security, they already have your bank information. They're going to get these checks out to you. Well, how many people do you know who've received those checks so far? Part of that stimulus bill was a program for small businesses so they can get money and cover their payroll for the next four months at least. That was the idea of it. Now, if you've got a small business, okay, you're having a terrible time trying to apply for that program. Okay, It's difficult because the banks didn't know what the regulations were. And then once they were, once they have some idea what they are, there's so many applications, it's difficult to get through. And to date, I don't know of anybody who has a small business that's got any money from that program. Not one person so far. So the federal government, no matter who's in charge, never, no matter who's in charge of the White House, it's slow by nature. It's large. It's very slow. It moves like a giant battleship very, very slowly. It just doesn't move quickly. It can't. By, it doesn't matter. It's not the president, you know, President Trump. It could have been President Obama or anybody else. But it doesn't move quickly. It just can't move that quickly. It wasn't designed that way. Lots of layers involved with that. So, do you think, realistically, that on May 1, some leprechaun's going to come in, flip a light switch, show you his pot of gold, and everybody in the United States can share that pot of gold? Do you really think it's going to happen? If he existed, and even if he wanted to, do you realistically think that 577,000 cases of COVID that are diagnosed in the U.S. right now, that any large group of people are going to go back to work anytime soon? Especially with the total lack of adequate testing. If you want to open the economy, you need to get the testing done. And right now, the president just isn't doing it. Okay, For whatever reason... The gross incompetencies of his office or his personality. I don't know what's going on. Okay, Jared Kushner might be a nice guy for real estate. I don't know. But what type of background does he have to handle a national emergency and get all his testing and supplies out? He doesn't. Which is one of the reasons why the testing is so bad right now. And they get on stage every day with the podium and, oh yeah, we've got all these tests out and that's a lovely thing. Okay, and I just checked the numbers. There's just over 200, 2,700,000 tests that were done so far in the United States to date. Okay, and that sounds like a really, really good deal. 2,700,000 tests that are done since, eight, since January. 2,700,000 2, tests done since January. It's a really good number. But the population of the United States is 327 million. Right now, they're testing less than 1% of the population. You can't get people back to work like that. It's just not physically possible. You don't know who's sick and who's not. Okay, And no matter what they say the briefing, okay, no matter who's reporting what, okay, in any briefing, in the White House or anywhere else, all you have to do is check in with the governors. governors. They can't get tests. Their frontline people, their EMS people, their police and firefighters can't get tests. So I can say whatever I want to say over here, but the frontline, the real proof, 
is what's happening on the front line. These people can't get tests. ER docs can't get tests. Nurses can't get tests. Now, the president really needs to use the, the Defense Production Act. Yes, he signed it, but he's not using it. For some reason, he doesn't want to let go enough to let one single military person with a serious non-political background okay, with, understand logistics to take charge of the full supply chain and have a coordinated federal response to this national problem and get the testing done. It's just not happening. You can't possibly send people back to work before you even know if they've got an active case of COVID or not. Right now, they've got people that in, in South Korea that got over the virus and got another case after the fact in South Korea, who did a phenomenal job of shutting the country down. Okay, they shut everything down. They contained it really, really well. Didn't have that many deaths. Okay, and some of the people that recovered from COVID are getting reinfected right now. So how are we supposed to do that here when we don't have the first front line test done? It's just not going to happen. And that brings me to the next thing I want to talk to you about tonight was, you know, what's a hero? What's a hero? Is it Superman? Is it Batman? Is it Wonder Woman? I mean, they're cute. They're interesting characters. Okay, they're great for a comic book or a TV show or a movie, but they're not really real, even if we'd like them to be. Let's look at some real people, though. How about Medal of Honor recipients? Those are real people. Okay, they're recognized by whatever branch of service they were actually in and by the president at the time that they were given their award as heroes. Okay. Those are real people, real heroes. Okay, and if you ask any one of them, any one of them, if they think they're a hero to a person, they'd all say no. They put themselves at risk. They know that. They did that, but they were just doing the things that they needed to do at the time to get something done when no, was else, when no one else was able to do it. That's a hero. They put themselves at risk and were just doing the things that needed to be done at a time when no one else was able to do them. And at this time of national crisis, we have tons of new quiet heroes that every day put themselves at risk. With that said, you know, your first thoughts go to frontline doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists, EMTs, police, firefighters. They go to work every day knowing that they don't have proper PPE to protect themselves. And they're putting that on themselves, but their family's at risk. And they know that. But there's another group of people that have been deemed essential workers that we don't routinely think about. Okay. These are quiet heroes that go to work every day with basically no PPE at all other than possibly a mask, and they put themselves and their families at risk every day, stocking shelves, working at the deli counters, checking you out with your order when you get to the cash register. Okay? Every day. There's the mail person that every day handles tons of letters and packages and gets them to your home. There's the stock person pulling your order at Amazon, the delivery person from Amazon, the FedEx, UPS, that bring them to your house every day. There are tons of quiet heroes these days that are putting themselves at risk to do the jobs that need to be done when no one else is able to do them. And the interesting thing is they're doing it for an average of $11 an hour if you're lucky and they get absolutely no respect from the people that they serve. Now these are just the facts. And then you have political biases that influences how you interpret the facts, or even if you accept them as real facts at all. And some people never do, but those are the facts. You want to give those facts some consideration, some thought. And on a daily basis, some meditation and some introspection is probably a good thing. Okay. You want to spend some time with your mind. When you do, you'll find out a few things about yourself that you might not like. Okay, You probably said something to someone that when you think about it, God, I wish I didn't really say that. Or God, I acted like a jerk that I really shouldn't do that. And that's okay, but you have to recognize those things. And if you don't have the quiet time to think about 
those things. If you don't spend time with your mind to be able to think about those things, you dismiss them immediately because they're uncomfortable thoughts and you must be right. You must always be right. okay? And you know people who want to be right all the time. Even when they're not, it causes problems. So some introspection, some meditation, some, some time with your mind, it gets you centered. Okay? And it's just part of the learning process. Okay? And if you keep doing it on a daily basis, something on a consistent basis, it's just like exercise. You get stronger and healthier over time. And when situations come up, you'll be much better prepared, okay, both physically and mentally, to handle those situations. You'll find you'll start treating people better. And some, when you do, a really, really mysterious thing starts to happen from the universe. Really mysterious. When you start treating people better, they start treating you better. Amazing how that works. And when you do that, you might find out, just some remote chance, that you've got more in common with some people than what you thought. There are more things that bind you together than what pull you apart. And when you think about those things, all of a sudden, life becomes easier. Generally more interesting, and sometimes actually more fun. And that's when you know that's when you really, really know that you can greatly increase your ability, not only to survive, but to recover and actually thrive. Because you'll be centered yourself. You'll be happy with you. And if you're happy with you, it's easier to be happy with other people. If you accept the fact that, oh yeah, the sun comes up in the morning, it's not really the moon, it's the sun, then you might be able to overlooks somebody else thinking that, oh yeah, well, maybe it's not really the sun. But if you're centered, you might be a little better with that. You might be a little bit more tolerant of somebody else's personal biases and how they influence what they say and do. Until that person spends some time with their mind and figures out that, oh, maybe it really is the sun comes up in the morning. Maybe it's really not the moon. And all of a sudden, you might have a relationship with somebody that you never had before. They look different from you. They sound different from you. Why would I want to talk with them? Well, most people want the same things for themselves and for their families. These are just middle class folks. Okay? They all want the same thing. A good life for their kids. They want their kids to do better than they did. Okay? And right now with this generation, it's difficult to do that with the economic times the way they are. It's difficult for your kids to do better than what you did. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. But if you get more centered, your kids get more centered, all of a sudden now, people start working together in ways that they never thought were possible before because, well, he's different. He's got a blue jacket, and I want a yellow jacket. And all my people have yellow jackets, and I can't deal with anybody who has a blue jacket. And you find out that these things are absolutely ridiculous. They all want the same thing. Okay? They want their kids to do better than they did. They want to be able to relax and enjoy their relationships with their kids and their grandkids. They want to be able to retire with some dignity. And maybe they don't need a Lamborghini in the driveway, but they want a car that works. And they want enough money so that they don't have to worry about scrimping and saving when they're 90 years old. Just some basic things. So, spend some time with your mind. When you do that, all these other things sort of drop in place, a little at a time, starting with you. So, I've had some time with you tonight. Okay, I appreciate that time. Um, I'll post this video on my YouTube channel tomorrow. We had some problems today, we're a little bit slow uh, in getting the video up. And there's a link inside the video to a page that I have a present every day there's a new present so um, go there like the video share the video click the link find out what your present is for that day there's always a new present I've got the old presents listed there also they're at the bottom of the page so I'm Dr. Fred Rouse the Romani doctor I'm here to help you get protect and enjoy 
your money, your life, and your retirement. I appreciate you being here. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow around 7 o'clock. Thank you.